today we're going to do something a little more uh, unique and different compared to my other videos. Um, so a while ago I made a tutorial DIY video on how to make your own uh, moon cat bag and um, because back when they first did the bags um, I went more into this into the the video that um, I'll put a link here and down below in the description about how for the anniversary they teamed up with a designer named Samantha Vega that only released uh, Lunar Artemis bags um, and then that was an exclusive thing and that was it and there was only like a few amount of bags that were sold and then a bunch of manufacturers made off brands for them so I showed you how to make your own um, this was mine um, it's really like it's had a lot of love <laughs> and I probably should have like watched it a little bit before I have uh, this video but I use it all the time um, and I, it, it's held up really really well um, and I really like that my bag is really big um, it's a decent in comparison to my head it's a decent sized bag I can fit my planner in here I can fit um, my wallet, my um, pens, my pencils, my um, I have two sets of keys. Uh, yeah, so I can fit a lot of stuff in this. Um, but being the fact that I made this bag myself, um, and there's only a certain amount of materials that are available to me, um, since I am, um, you know, working out of my home, and I only have like a simple sewing machine, no industrial machine. Um, I didn't have a serger for this project, uh, so. There's so many scenarios uh, where you could get better materials and better um, equipment to work with. Um, so I won't lie, I'm really, really proud of myself for this project. It turned out really good. I always get compliments on it. Um, and the video's been doing really well and it's been getting good feedback from you and I really appreciate that. I'm glad that you guys enjoy it. Um, but I was, you know, forever, forever curious to see how the bags would have looked from, um, you know, uh, other off brands or the original um, collection of Samantha Vega. So I really wanted to know because I'm just one of those people that love learning and I love to, uh, you know, see how better I can do for myself every time I do a video or create something for you or for me. So um, yeah, I was always curious about it. So over time between that video and now, I've met a few people that have had off-brand versions of the bag, um, but not uh, the original, the very first release of them um, from the collection. So I've never been able to get my hands and see that one up close, but I was able to see the other off-brands and see what they had to offer for the brand um, to make their own version of the Mooncat bag. So uh, one of my favorite websites that I shop for is called Spree Picky and Spree Picky is a really nice website. They sell cosplay stuff, they sell um, cute nerdy items you can have for your home, for your everyday wear, uh, purses, wallets, whatever you can think of. It's a really great company and um, I believe they're China based and um, I have a really cute Karkaf Sakura wallet from them that I've used for the past couple years and it's still holding up really well. Um, you know, me, I'm not sure if Spree Picky, I'm pretty sure Spree Picky doesn't have the original collection. They make it in-house, so it is an off-brand um, replica, uh, knockoff, whatever you want to call it, of some of the other stuff. But their quality is really, really good. And uh, yeah, so Spree Picky did a small collection of pink moon cat bags. So I've told you before when I made this video for this guy that the only colors I found available at the time was um, black, white, um, purple, and well the lavender, and gray um, representing Luna Artemis and Diana. And um, the gray and the lavender representing Diana because she's seen as both, just how Luna is seen as a black cat or a purple cat. Um, but yeah, that was it. That's I never saw any other anything else. And Spree Picky did a very small run. I think they're still doing it of the Diana Mooncat bags um, backpack version in a pink option. So I had to get it for myself. I was really curious. Um, again, you know, my bag has done really, really well for me. But it, I was very curious to to like treat myself to something that um, I know elasticity wise will last longer than something. I have made mostly because this is a soft leather so it doesn't wear as well 
and um, you know I did have hand dye this so I mean it does have some bald spots over time of color that's happened I mean it's not I mean really it's not noticeable I mean the only person like would notice is me but uh, yeah I was curious so I had a bag for myself for Christmas so um, Christmas they're having a free shipping um, sale for their holidays and they had a coupon option um, for a few other things so I was able to get the bag um, yes it was very expensive um, and I don't really spend money on myself like this uh, I think after the discounts it was like $50 including shipping um, I think it's like 58 and then shipping normally don't quote me on that but I got the bag uh, and here it is Yay! so in comparison you can see um, they're pretty close to the same size and when I was showing you how to make my DIY version I did change the pattern to what I like in a purse I didn't include the chain on the side of the purse for the strap right here because the originals had that um, I know see again like on the websites you don't get the option of seeing measurements and knowing how big bags are most of the time um, so I didn't know like how big the original Samantha Vega bag was so I made it to what I thought should be um, so yeah and this bag is of the same size being a backpack I thought it would come a little bit bigger than this um, another thing that's a little weird about it is I'm not sure if this is a spree picky thing or this is the weird part after the Samantha Vega collection came out I think they only did purse options I don't think there's ever been um, the backpack variation I think that's something later that knockoff and um, replica brands started doing but don't quote me on that uh, so yeah um, the shape of the bag has changed um, for this free picky collection that's what I was getting at so it's no longer rounded on the bottom um, to create the moon cat base very well so that's not on here I also don't like when they package it to me they didn't send it in a box they said in um, bubble wrap so the ears were like this when they came in and it's been taking some some serious pulling to make these stand up more like cat ears because they actually look more like mouse ears um, and the shape is a little different than and again I'm not sure if this is a spree picky option or just something they you know exactly like this mega Samantha Vega collection um, so with the you know the look of spree picky their stuff is very top-notch looking um, they even did the distance of making the Samantha Vega um, and brand on it too um, so this is me I'm sad I, I got I got a contact spree picky as I just only got this less than a week ago like a few days ago two, two days ago um, but one of the jewels are missing in the front um, but this is it right here it says Samantha Vega um, one, one, I think it's that one, yeah, that one. And um, another thing I noticed with this bag is it's so heavy. <laughs> and I'm not sure if it's a brand thing or what, but it's heavy. And um, yeah, you can see the stitching on it. Um, and it's, you can hear my nails on it. It's like a, a picnic table thickness. It's really, really thick. And um, you can tell that my, my pattern that I made for my other one, um, you can see the shapes did the same right here, although it got a little wonky right there. And also, man, I noticed they didn't have the bag bumpers in the bottom of the bag to protect the bag from getting gross when it sits somewhere. Um, being a backpack, you actually, I think you tend to set it down more often than a purse. At least I, I do. Um, so the backpack option is really cool. You get, um, you get the double straps right here that come down and then the double clips in the bottom right there. Or you can get a set, they give you a separate strap right here where you can take, oh my God, yeah, too many, not enough hands. You get to have two things right here. So these were used um, in the same design for my bag right here. And um, there's the lining, it looks really pretty. Um, you can tell, I mean, people who are like super diehard Sailor Moon fans when they talk about the lining right here um, about how it's a little shaky and um, the colors are off um, I again I haven't seen the original so I have no idea how close it is to it but it's really pretty it makes me happy so that's good so something I also I noticed since the bag is so thick 
I cannot get my hand in here to save my life. The metal zipper chews on my fingers whenever I try to stick my hand in it. Um, it's not very forgiving as in trying to get to your bag. It's so funny because like, the reason why I even made uh, my own bag um, is because uh, I like Luna's my favorite moon cat, but uh, I didn't want a black bag because I mostly wear pink. And um, I was afraid of like sticking my hand in a black hole or losing my stuff and not enough light to even see my bag. That is exactly the case for this bag. I cannot, even when I go like this, I cannot see the bottom of the bag very well. It's very dark and um, it's hard to get my stuff out, honestly. Um, I'd be like this for a while. Hold on. Let me get my keys. Let me get my keys. But uh, it's, yeah, it's kind of a pain. <laughs> um, aside from that though, uh, the zipper was off its tracks when I first got it on the inside. Um, right here, that zipper right there. Um, let me pull the lining reverse so you can see it better. Mm -hmm. There we go. So I pulled the lining out so you can see it better. But yeah, there's a zipper right here. And that was off its tracks and then they have this little boop there it's actually I think that's identical to the replica they're basing it off of and then there's two there's two pockets right here like, turn the, like I said turn the lining inside out I think one's like for your cell phone one's for your, like your stick and stuff I do two pockets on mine design as well um, it is made out of a canvas material um, and yeah, I mean, it's a really, really cute bag. It's just, oh, and this has a pocket right here. This may not include my design either. Um, most of these I felt like, what the hell are you gonna put in there? Like, paper? Like, I don't know. Um, that was a little odd design-wise for me, so I didn't put that in my variation for the Moon Cat bag. Um, but yeah, I mean, there is a few things that's a little weird about uh, this one versus mine. And I it guess it's just like a preference and bag choices but um you can tell like even looking at this bag they get to have more things available to them that makes a purse more elasticity um gonna last longer i know it sounds really weird um but being a um, maker of clothing and costumes and stuff like that you find out that yes it's cheaper to do other options but at the cost of are you gonna wear this every day? Um, where are you wearing it? Is it gonna wear well? Is it gonna age well? There's been so many things to consider when you're making something. Um, and it also depends on you individually, like how you are wearing it. Um, so if I had made this bag the way I made it right here for a, a friend of mine in particular, um, a lot of my girlfriends are kind of destructive with their purses and I don't know if it would have lasted as long as it has with me as it would have done for them um, just because how they wear their purses how hard they're on their purses um, so for me I'm a little more I guess gentler with my stuff because I don't want to like break it and have to fix it or um, find out I can't fix it that would kill me but um, it just makes me appreciate my stuff a little bit more especially when you make your own things um, so for an example some of the things elasticity wise is gonna make this purse last longer than mine is um, you can tell on the edge right here it's kind of like a rubber finishing edge they do on leather um, I don't have that available to me um, I had to do a zigzag stitch on mine um, but they did they could just uh, see that together with that really pretty pastel pink um, that matches the purse to make it last a little bit longer um, the good thing about the placement of these and the rubber finish on these is this constantly hits my arms and my back my hair uh, so yeah that's gonna help this last a little bit longer they also have an industrial machine uh, the difference between an industrial machine and a everyday home machine is um, it's just can get through fabric um, a lot easier, the thickness and whatnot. They tend to get in those holes for each stitch a little easier. Um, yeah, they're just like a monster. <laughs> so they're really impressive. Um, one thing I mentioned with when I was making my own bag is I kept saying it's so thick, I couldn't get past it. I, you know, even with different um, needle um, 
uh, changings, changings for the needles. There is different needles you put in your sewing machine for heavyweight, lightweight fabric, um, different types of fabric. Um, but even so, like um, just the way uh, an industrial machine is made to versus a home machine, especially since a lot of the machines you buy for your house these days are made with substitute materials. Like some stuff is just made out of plastic versus just metal. A lot of industrial machines are all metal, 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 which are going to last a lot longer and, and durability wise, uh, weathering wise. Um, and then a lot of the home machines have a lot of plastic involved and they cut corners by doing those sorts of things. Um, and industrial machines last really long too just by changing out those different um, tools um, and the, what, what it's made out of. So that's completely different too. Um, so also for an example, like this leather, pleather, sorry, it's not real, um, is so thick and it does have kind of, I'm trying to come up with a word for it. Um, like I referred to before, like a picnic table, this material, uh, the water would just fall off, like kind of has that waxy kind of feel to it. Um, it Again, I don't know if you can see a little bubbling, the stitching, but yeah, that kind of purling effect keeps the water off of it versus um, what I had found before materialized, a soft leather. Uh, this is not as, I guess, waterproof, uh, weatherproof compared to something like this. Um, also, um, like that compared to this fabric and it has a kind of, um, just spe specifically for this fold, you can kind of see where it naturally wants to bend right there. The lining that it's built, of, about, built into is like a harder kind of plastic vinyl inside. And then it has the canvas on the inside too on top of a metal setting right here. So that sewing machine that they were pushing through here was really, really like, like a monster. Like pushed right through it. You can even see all the stitching is very, very um, precise and um, easy push through and um, yeah so like they had more materials again available to them and um, tools that are um, gonna make things last so um, I'm not telling you to not do DIYs and not make your own stuff but you can see the difference um, in what people have available to their home versus what they buy um, especially like it also makes you appreciate what you're buying a little bit more and to keep an eye out for what you're buying um, there is quite a few um, knockoff variation purses I found on the Sailor Moon purses that when I saw them in person they were no better than mine um, not at all uh, there's websites like Wish and eBay and Amazon that sell knockoff versions of the Sailor Moon um, Moon Cat bags. Um, you can tell the difference usually when this is mine, so mine's different, but um, the Wish ones I saw recently are made out of vinyl moons and then some other ones are made out of the replica um, metal moons. Um, you can tell how much they wanted to spend on their material. So most of the Moon Cat bags that have the vinyl moon I've noticed like are no better than what I can make at home. So if I was telling myself, uh, which I was deciding this before I made the DIY video, do I want to buy that bag where I could totally make it myself? I can see just by looking at the materials, how it was constructed, I can make it better than that. Um, so I decided to, that's where it came from. And then Spree Picky was just a, a chance that they had me in a bag like this that I really wanted. And I waited for the right time for the coupons and the right time of the year and had the money to even spend on it. So um, it's a big difference, I guess. <laughs> I don't even know what to, what to say. But what I'm trying to tell you is uh, just weigh out your options when you're buying things. Um, appreciate, you know, your money is your hard work. Uh, and if you can make it yourself, I do suggest you make it yourself. You'll learn a lot. Um, so I guess also what I'm trying to say is, you know, just making this bag from the experience, I know now what to look into purses, like durability wise, how hard I'll be in the bag, yada yada, that kind of thing. So yeah. That's my comparison between DIY versus replica company bags. Um, again, I am not <laughs> like an expert in all of this. This is just something I have noticed when I make something versus when I buy something, particularly with this project. And yeah, if you are in a predicament like I am, where you wanna make your own custom bag, I do suggest making your own bag because 
those replicas from eBay and Etsy and whatnot are no better than what you can find in your own store. Um, my materials were purchased um, mostly from Joann's and I think this guy was I don't want to say Etsy, like there was a pack of the moon, um, crescent moon cabochons I found, and I just repurposed those and the D-rings you can find there. Um, yeah, I mean like, uh, other than the material, my own custom material that was kind of unique, um, you can use whatever you want for your lining, but you could make that bag the same cost, if not less, making it yourself versus um, bigger companies like Spring Picky that are willing to pull out all the stops for the metal stuff and building the replica. Um, really look at the reviews too because I haven't seen very many people say they don't like Spring Picky. Um, I haven't had a problem with them other than the fact of my sad little jewel being missing, but <laughs> I need to contact them. I'm sure they'll be good about it. Um, but yeah, just uh, have fun. Be a Sailor Moon fan. And yeah. Have a wonderful day and thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye!